Hi and welcome back to the channel. In this week's video we're going to continue our journey learning DBT on top of Snowflake and I'm going to talk you through the type 2 slowly changing dimension and how to implement that using DBT. And if you stick around to the end of the video I'll let you know how you can become a member on our exclusive Master in Snowflake program. In the meantime don't forget to like and subscribe and share these videos if you're getting good value from them. Okay, so I'm assuming you guys know what a slowly changing type 2 dimension is, but if you don't, here's the 30 second breakdown for a little bit of revision. So often you want to track changes over time in your database. Commonly, you would do that in a dimension if you're using um, Kimball design style schemas such as dimensions and facts, although it's not limited to that. I've seen slowly changed dimension type 2s also implemented on a uh, fair normal form tables as well. However, the most important point is you need to track changes over time. A really common example of this, for example, is orders. So if you take a look at my screen, the snowflake here, we're going to create a table called mock orders. And we're going to insert some values into that table where we've got an order ID, a particular status, a created at date and an updated at date. So Pretty simple, but again, quite a relevant example to what you'd see in the real world. Now, often you'd want to track whenever that status changes. So then you can have a look at that and analyze the data to work out how long from receiving an order to that order being processed, to that order being shipped and then finally delivered. By analyzing that, you could, for example, look at the time lags between each stage in that process to understand how efficient or not it is and then you could do something about it. But essentially, slowly changing type two dimensions allows you to track changes over time on the records coming in from your source systems. And so that's what we're going to look at here, starting off in Snowflake. So I've created that table mock orders. I'm going to insert those values, as I mentioned. Don't worry about the update statement for now. That's how we're going to simulate some source system changes. So we've created our table. So we're heading back over to our DBT cloud project now we've been working on throughout this journey so far. Now in DBT, SED type twos are known as snapshots and you'll see you'll have a folder already set up within your project in DBT. Let me just talk you through this code before I create it as a snapshot. I have a couple of config blocks in here and one is just setting a target schema and a pendant underscore snapshot to my schema name. And I then use that later on in my config here. I've got my target database and now I'm specifying my unique key. So this is what I want to join the incoming records on from our source data. In this case, the mock, uh, the mock orders table we've just created in Snowflake. That's the business key. I want to join that on my target table on this column order ID. The strategy I want to employ to working out um, what I need to take as change records is I'm going to work with the timestamp and I'm going to use the updated at field that we created on that source table that's incoming to work out the high watermark and so I don't process the same records again potentially. So what we're going to do next is we're going to create a new file. And before we do that, we're going to copy this code. We're going to call this mock orders.sql. Click create. And we're going to paste that in there and click save. We're then going to go down to our command line. And we're going to type in dbt snapshot and we're going to execute that and so now you can see the dbt snapshot is run successfully if we look into the details of mock orders to take a look at what's actually happened behind the scenes we can see dbt's creating an md5 checksum using our business key the unique key that we've defined as well as our timestamp as well so it's creating that unique uh, checksum using md5 and it's using that then to compare the data that's income and so it can work out if there's any changes. So obviously this time is the first time we've run it. So if we just go into here 
and we just run this query and all that's doing again passing it through to snowflake executing against the table in snowflake and we can see our records in there exactly as we inserted them into snowflake as we would expect you can also see now dbt's added a valid from and valid to date all our valid twos and nulls so let's see what happens now if we go back into snowflake and we update the status to our records as well as the updated at date time as well and let's run our snapshots again after that and see what happens so let's go back into snowflake and let's update our status to delivered for all the records uh, where the order id is greater than one so these three records essentially as well as the updated at timestamp which we also need to make sure we're moving on so dbt actually picks up those records so we've updated that let's go back to the dbt cloud and let's run our snapshot command once more and you can see our dbt snapshots ran successfully now this time let's have a look at the details for mock orders and see exactly what happened and we'll see this time it looks quite different from the first run so the first thing it does is it collects the snapshot of data from our snapshot version of the table and it picks up the latest records by specifying the dbt valid to date is null next it's looking for the inserts in the source data using the snapshot query if i just go back up snapshot query is here and it's selected everything from our income and source table our source data it's picking up all our columns again applying that checksum against our business key and our timestamp for update to that it's then got an updates query again from the snapshot query to use later and then this is where the real magic happens then so it's looking for inserts um, here so it's tagging these records as inserts hard-coded as the dbt change type against these ones how it works that out is it takes that income and source data it left joins it to our snapshot of data so the data on our target table and you can see it's joining here on a unique business key checking that the data doesn't exist then in our target snapshot table so looking for where that unique key is null or a combination of if the unique key is null and the valid from timestamp is previous to the updated at timestamp so it's looking for those insertions coming in then it does the same with updates so hard code and update this time it's joining the data together on the unique key we specified and again comparing the timestamps that it's using as well and then bringing it all together for union all statement so let's have a look what our data looks like now if we run this query again this is what it was like previously after our initial load now we can see we've got three new records in there we can see we've got the delivered status quite a few of those if i just order this by uh, the order id so we can get a better sense of what we're looking at here and here we go so we can see order id initially that was as a delivered status anyway so that record just remains as is from the initial load that doesn't change our updated at date stays as the 4th of january 2020 which was as we inserted it into snowflake originally however orders two onwards they originally went from a shipped status and this was the previous record so it was valid from the 4th of jan 2020 to the 5th of jan 2020 when a new record came in you can see here the dates it's using to drive the closing off of a previous record and the valid from of a new record is driven by the updated at date you can override that as well but i'm keeping this example pretty straightforward and simple for now just to show you how easy it is but there's lots of additional kind of configuration options you can look into to override certain elements of the behavior but as we move down through the list again we can see the differences between the other order ids where we're tracking those changes over time and that's how easy it is to to implement sed type 2s in dbt i really hope you found that useful i also wanted to let you know about our master and snowflake program with myself that we run and it's, it's an exclusive signature program to help you master snowflake and learn how to design implement and scale solutions in the cloud and i've designed this program specifically for those people who have either scratched the surface using snowflake or who are stuck working with legacy on-premise technologies and haven't been invested in by their companies and have fallen behind in their career and what i've done is packaged up 
my knowledge and experience of working with Snowflake since 2017 in learning how to package up Snowflake's out-of-the-box capabilities in a way where you can apply them in the real world to address common challenges. So this program isn't about theory. Of course, I need to introduce you to the concepts if you're new to Snowflake, and many of my members are, but it's really about introducing the theory and then in practice how you apply those in the real world. I've been through the pain of understanding what works and what doesn't. Now I've got a formula or a set of recipes, if you like, that show you how to do that. So the Master in Snowflake program includes in-depth, on-demand video course content that I've created that all include practical hands-on demos. I provide access to all the code, templates, and files that I use as part of those demos. So you can download them and use them freely. You may want to use them in your day-to-day -day work. You may want to take them and customize them and use them as a starting point. All members on the program get exclusive access to a members-only group where everybody can help each other out and share their knowledge and best practice and get expert advice. Finally, I also carry out a group 60 minute coaching call with all the members, totally optional, where you can ask me anything about Snowflake, data analytics, data strategy, data architecture, you name it, um, interview advice, and I can help you and give my um, input and help and support and guidance around that. Finally, you'll get lifetime access to all future updates. Snowflake's changing and evolving. There's new features and releases every week, and you'll continue to benefit from those updates as well. At a high level, there's 10 modules. This is what we cover, everything ranging from the Snowflake architecture to getting data into Snowflake. And then once you've got data, how do you effectively use it, secure it, share it, and work with it to ensure that you get the maximum value from your Snowflake implementation? If you're interested, I've included the application link in the video description below. If this sounds like the thing that you're looking for and you want to supercharge your career, and if you're ready to take the ultimate step, I'd really encourage you to fill out the application form below.